Greetings and blessings to you all, whoever you are and wherever you are. My name is Pastor Jeff Schaaf from the Manawatu Lutheran Parish in New Zealand and today is Pentecost Sunday. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. And with this fire of love lit in us, we worship together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit. Almighty and merciful God, you sent your Holy Spirit at Pentecost, making the disciples bold to preach the good news. Send us out with the power of the same Spirit to spread the fire of your love. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, I'd like to now share with you the first Bible reading for this Sunday, as recorded in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. It's that fantastic account of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own language. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Alleluia. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Alleluia. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Breathe on me, breath of God. Folks, today... We are going to take, we're going to take a breather. We're going to take some time, take a, take a deep breath and inhale God's word of life. Yes, you may ask, so what's so different about today? Aren't we supposed to breathe in God's word every day? Well, of course, the obvious answer is a resounding yes. But... Being Pentecost Sunday, there is a special emphasis on the Holy Spirit and, and how it was given to the disciples and also given to us. So we are taking the opportunity to, to fill our soul, our nefesh, our inner being with God's breathed and living word. We also want to set a, set a challenge for all of us, me included. To do so, I, I quote from eminent biblical scholar Richard Lenski, who says, The idea that the gift of the Spirit is necessary only for those called to a special office, mine, for example, bishops, pastors, priests, specific ministry pastors, vicars and deacons, or only for the apostles, 
is a decided mistake. End of quote. The challenge set by Jesus himself and highlighted in this quote is, are we all willing to accept Jesus' invitation and his command to be his disciples and to be messengers of his word? It's some challenge. So to begin, I'd like to share part of the alternate gospel reading for today from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. John writes, When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And we pray, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. During the 1800s, English musician Edwin Hutch wrote one of the most sung Pentecost hymns, Breathe on me, breath of God. But guess what, folks? We are not singing it today. My camera person wouldn't let me. But the lyrics, all the lyrics are just too good not to share. Well, at least some of them anyway. So as a taster, here's verse 1, not sung. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Hmm. In all of today's readings, God's breath, the Holy Spirit, is undoubtedly a key focus, which is totally understandable because Pentecost is believed to be the great occasion when God sent the third member of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit, down from heaven. But... But we should not be surprised or confused about Pentecost, thinking that it was the first time God breathed his breath of life, the Holy Spirit, should we? Mm. Think about think about the vision of the army of the dry bones who, who are brought back to life by God, by God's breath being blown into them, as recorded in Ezekiel chapter 37. Think about King David speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit, recorded in 2 Samuel chapter 23. Or, or think about how God breathed life into a shape of clay called Adam, bringing him to life. By the way, here's a little bit of knowledge for you. The Hebrew Aramaic word for soil or ground is avam, but spelt A-D-A-M, just like Adam. Adam, the first human God created, was formed from the ground or soil, from avam. But God, hmm, even before creating Adam, or Adam, God breathed 
creation into being even before he shaped Adam in his image, in God's image. Genesis 1 tells us God spoke. He breathed the words of creation that brought matter and life from the deep nothingness. So yes, folks, no surprise, the Holy Spirit plays a pivotal role in all of today's readings. But it's not the only important theme highlighted. Both Luke and John's Ascension accounts highlight something that the whole world craved then and still craves now. Peace. Peace. As a reminder of this, listen again to what Jesus said when he appeared to a few of the disciples at Emmaus, as recorded in Luke 24, verse 36. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And in John chapter 20, verses 19 and 23, it tells us that Jesus passed the peace twice when he appeared to the, to the disciples. First, when he quite suddenly, quite miraculously and totally mysteriously stood among them. And Jesus repeats the, the peace blessing as he begins his commissioning of, of the disciples in verse 21, where Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And this peace we're talking about here and seeking is, what the, that most elusive thing, is as Richard Lenski set notes, and I quote, It is not a lovely looking package that is empty inside, but one that is filled with a heavenly reality far more beautiful than the covering in which it is wrapped. It is a genuine, bona fide, no fakes allowed peace. And it's a peace that is way beyond our human comprehension. We'll come back to the peace theme later and discuss how it is so closely connected to the giving of the Holy Spirit and, and Jesus' commissioning of the disciples. <clears throat> now about this, hmm, it's interesting to note that in most modern translations of John's Gospel, John chapter 20 verse 21 says, As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Whereas, some earlier translations say, as the Father has commissioned me, so I send you. This alternative is interesting. Interesting because being commissioned to do something gives a, a greater sense of receiving dunamis, that's power and authority. And we have no quarrels with that, with, with that understanding because, well, because Jesus was definitely given all power and authority, wasn't he? So no arguments there. John chapter 20, verses 22 and 23, then share John's gospel version of Jesus dispensing the Holy Spirit on the disciples and, and their commissioning. Mind you again, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. 
Here, the disciples were given all of the power and all the authority they needed to fulfil their calling. And friends, this has immense ramifications for we who profess to be Jesus' disciples too. We too are given authority and power from Jesus to fulfil our own calling or commission. As Ephesians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Matthew chapter 28 all emphasise this commission to bring Jesus' gospel of peace and salvation to the world belongs to the entire church. The church universal. Jesus' church. It belongs to you and to me. And it's what we are sent to do in Jesus' holy name. But that's all good. But how did all this commissioning and sending and, and dispensing of authority happen? By being gifted with the Holy Spirit. That's how. John chapter 20 verse 22 says that Jesus breathed on the disciples and they received the Holy Spirit. In the great Pentecost account recorded by Luke in the book of Acts, we are told that the Holy Spirit was, was placed on the disciples with tongues of fire. But the Holy Spirit was also put in the disciples by the power of the mighty rushing wind. Well, the breath of God. And in breathing on the disciples, Jesus enabled the disciples. He gave all the power, all the authority, all the dunamis the disciples required to do their job of proclaiming the Gospels to the world. But that gifting of the Holy Spirit was not just reserved for the disciples at Pentecost, was it? Oh no. No, folks. Pentecost is a great reminder that all we who are baptised have been given the Holy Spirit too. We too are given that same dunamis. We too are unable to proclaim the Gospels. We too are given the correct words to say, as Jesus himself declares in Matthew chapter, 10, 20, uh, Matthew chapter 10, verses 20 and 21, where he says, Do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. But the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. <coughs> Once again, we see an example of Jesus' promise of the Holy Spirit as our advocate and ally who acts and speaks for us. Now, I realise that what I'm about to say, well, it's easy to say, but it's not always that easy to fulfil. With the Holy Spirit as our advocate and our ally, there is no need for us to be timid and shy about being Jesus' witnesses to the world. As we say the words that will be given to us, what we say is said with Jesus' authority. With Jesus' authority. And what do we say? Hmm. John 20 verse 23 gives us all of the words, words of action that we need. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. However, if you retain the sins of any, 
they are retained. Friends, we are given the permission and the power and the authority to forgive the sins of those who ask for forgiveness. Which is an awesome, awesome privilege and responsibility. Why? Why is it so awesome? Why is it such a privilege? Well, because being forgiven is tremendously healing. But forgiving is also amazingly healing too. And not only is being forgiven and forgiving healing, but it helps to also bring that most sought after and elusive gift, peace. Peace. See, told you we'd come back to peace later on. So friends, Use your calling and your commission to exercise forgiveness and bring peace to yourself, to your family and your community and to the world. Just as the Father, Son and Holy Spirit desire. Amen. And the peace of God that is beyond our human understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, who breathes his breath, the Holy Spirit, on you. Amen. Friends, let us pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the church. Thank you, Holy Father, for sending the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, as our Lord had promised. Pour out your life-giving spirit on your holy church throughout the world and equip its members with faith in Christ and all the Spirit's other gifts. Lord, you sent out your spirit on the disciples like the rush of a mighty wind and distributed tongues of fire on their heads. Burn out all that is evil in us and commission your people for holy service and raise up more to serve in our church and sanctify, sanctify us together with all the pastors and teachers of our district. Lord, you inspired the disciples with your spirit to praise your marvellous deeds in many, many different languages. Unloose the tongues of all of your people so that we may joyfully confess you as our Lord and boldly proclaim our common faith to all the world. Lord, your spirit touched the hearts of those who heard the gospel from Peter. Sharpen the consciences of those who hear your word and convince them of its truth so that they may turn from their sins and be forgiven and be healed. Direct our place in your mission so that as the body of Christ, together we may bring the peace that passes all human understanding. O Lord, you gave the Holy Spirit to those who were baptised on the day of Pentecost. Let your Spirit renew the faith of all who have, who have been baptised, so that in public worship we may devote ourselves to, to the teaching of the apostles, to the giving of gifts, to the breaking of bread in the Lord's Supper and the prayer of the church, the prayer of the church for the world. Lord, your spirit sustains the life of all. Open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing with what is good. Lord, heal the sick, give peace to the dying and meet the needs of those we personally know to be in want and whom we now pray for silently in our hearts. Lord, we bring all of these things before you as we pray. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, 
You, are not, you, you united people from many different nations and cultures by and through your Holy Spirit. Bring together all who have been divided by misunderstanding, by hatred and mistrust. And join us with them and all the angels as we adore you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so that the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. In the grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father Almighty, and the fellowship of of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.